Um, but look, let's just call it what it was. Last week's whatever it was, Friday and, and Tuesday rally wasn't much of a bounce. I'm not I'm not calling that. So I, I do think we're very oversold here. But, you know, to the bigger picture of why I think we're due for more than a bounce, this really comes down to whether we're going to have a recession or not. Um, I've been consistent in saying that I just don't see it. I thought over the weekend about those reports from Target and Walmart. And a couple of things to consider on this, Scott. Uh, one, top line estimates uh, were beaten. OK, so the consumer was out there spending. The margins were atrocious, as we know. But think about that for a second. Walmart and Target's expenses are some other company's revenues. As long as the consumer is spending, and we got the retail sales report last week, um, you know, this, this market can continue to hum along, except... Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a growth slowdown here this quarter and next. You look into next year and all those factories that are being built. I tweeted something out on Friday. I saw that a new uh, auto plant announcement was made in Georgia by Hyundai. $5.5 billion for a new EV plant, 8,100 jobs being created. These things are going on all over the country. I just find it hard to get bearish on the economy and the markets from where we are now with that sort of news continuing to come out. Okay, Bryn, I mean, Jamie Dimon today is, says that their investor day, the first one they've had in a, in a while because of COVID, U.S. economy strong, storm clouds that may dissipate. They affirm their target for 17% returns this year. They raise their net interest income outlook. In other words, it feels like things got awfully negative, awfully fast. The question is, have we overshot the negativity, Bryn? What's, what's, what's challenging here is, to, to, to Jim's point and to Jamie Dimon's point, the economy is still strong, unemployment still low, green shoots, people are still spending. That continues to give the Fed runway to raise rates. And don't forget, the Fed hasn't even started QT. Last month, actually, the balance sheet got bigger. And so I still think we're in this conundrum where, yes, the economy is strong, yes, the consumer is strong, but that gives the Fed more runway. And I do think inflation is going to be sticky. It's going to be higher just because these supply chains aren't easing. You have, you know, China shutting down again. And so I think we're going to continue to be in this tug of war, Scott, for the next at least few months as the Fed is going to continue to tighten. You know, later on this week, on Wednesday, they release their notes. I think those are still going to be hawkish, which they're jawboning. And I really feel the Fed already blew it last year, not, not stopping Q, QE earlier. And so I think investors just need to be patient. You know, this year can be a year of accumulation not necessarily a year of capital appreciation, but I do think we still have tough, tough sledding because all of those good data points you just recited to me are negative because they give the Fed more runway to hike rates. Yeah. Uh, Surratt, 